In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries in loving gratitude for our Father's mercy, who sent his Son to live among us, to show us the way to salvation, calling us to repent of our sins and trust our Father's mercy as together we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Now, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalishah, bringing to Elijah, the man of God, twenty barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elijah said, Give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, How can I set this before a hundred people? Elisha insisted, Give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat, and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over, as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love. 
striving to preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. The, God, the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. A great prophet has risen in our midst. God has visited his people. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were reclining, and also as much fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Those who are witnesses to Jesus' life, death, and resurrection were hoping that Jesus would return in their time. But it didn't happen, and they were advancing in years. Surviving disciples understood that they needed to start recording and sharing their memories. If there were annual reunions of Jesus' disciples after his resurrection, scholars would time Paul's letters to be around their 20th reunion the Gospel of Mark, around their 35th, the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, around their 50th, and John's Gospel, some 15 years after that. I remember my 50th class reunion a few years ago. As we shared recollections of years past, conflicting details emerged, and a casual observer might have wondered if we had even been in the same place. But each fond memory had its own perspective as our shared experiences gained new light and greater depth. Like stories at a reunion, the variances in the gospel accounts enrich the stories of Christ Jesus' intervention into human history. Our gospels provide a four-dimensional perspective to deepen the story of God's Son who lived and died as one of us. We learn of his birth, his joys, and his struggles as he taught us to call his Father God, our Father. Jesus proclaimed the message of God's merciful love for all people and used his divine powers to nourish, to heal, and to forgive. For this, his life was ended in a gruesome crucifixion. For the last several weeks, 
we have been listening to Mark's gospel, composed when many of eyewitnesses to Jesus' life and resurrection were still around. And we've heard about Jesus' urge to heal, to teach, and to help us with our fatigue. In his compassion, as Jesus saw the increasing crowds, he saw their need for a shepherd and wanted to nourish their hunger. As our readings from Mark have been leading up to this multiplication miracle, instead of hearing about it from Mark, we will be reading the Bread of Life discourse from the Gospel of John for the next five Sundays, starting with today's multiplication miracle. Mark's, the first gospel written, is the gospel we will return to in September. Until then, we will be hearing from John, the last gospel that was written almost 50 years after Mark, or over 50 years after Mark. John's deeply theological account describes Jesus' mission to feed us with something that we could not have imagined to ask for. Today's story about Jesus' multiplication of the loaves and fishes is one of only two miracles that are recorded in all four Gospels, and it is reported twice in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark. The other miracle is the most important miracle of all, the resurrection, when Christ Jesus proved the power of God's love and everything that he had taught. We heard a similar multiplication miracle in our first reading from the Old Testament. About 800 years before Jesus, with God's help, Elisha was able to feed 100 people with 20 loaves and a little grain with leftovers. God will provide for us, as God did in the very early scriptures when we hear about the manna in the desert from Exodus. With five loaves and two fish, everything the young boy had, Jesus fed 5,000. That's 50 times as many people as Elijah with a quarter of the number of loaves. And he had 12 full wicker baskets of leftovers. This multiplication miracle is mind-boggling, but God's ways are not our ways. We fear having nothing left, even in those times when it appears that we just have too much. The loaves and fishes is a precursor to the event from the Last Supper that occurs at every Mass, an even more confounding mystery than the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. When we consume our Eucharist, we share the same Last Supper nourishment that has been multiplied in time. The body and blood of Christ is made present for our nourishment at every Mass until Jesus, our risen Savior, comes again. But this is also a story of our involvement in divine work. The meager provisions provided by one boy were necessary for Jesus to turn inadequacy into superabundance. And that continues today. We continue to have a part. Our physical need for nourishment parallels our need for spiritual nourishment for eternal life, and God involves us in both. John's Gospel explains this nourishment of God's love and calls us to become what we eat and to behave like Christ toward each other. And this is certainly our struggle on this side of the kingdom. Human love will inevitably incline, collide with our selfishness. In our second reading, Paul reminded the Ephesians to bear with each other in peaceful unity and to maintain loving behavior. In our need to consume, we may lose sight of our call to embrace loving behavior, to be at peace and to share our gifts. Our loving Father has given us the gift of his Son for our nourishment in word and in sacrament. We have the bread of life and the cup of salvation to help us grow in love as we seek redemption and deliverance from evil. In our pursuit, we are called to share our gifts with each other so that our goodness may multiply and strengthen the body of Christ. 
St. Mother Teresa demonstrated the multiplication of love. Starting with very little, she gave it all as she ministered in the slums of Calcutta. When she died almost 50 years later, her work had yielded 80 schools, 300 mobile dispensaries, 70 leprosy clinics, 30 hospice homes, 30 homes for abandoned children, and tens of thousands of volunteers worldwide. Christ Jesus has given us divine nourishment of love for us to consume, spiritual food to help us to have strength to use our gifts to multiply God's love and nourishment in our troubled and hungry world. We gather here to listen to the word of God and to receive our Eucharistic nourishment of the body and blood of Christ. May it become nourishment that stimulates us to share our gifts with others as we anticipate our eternal reunion in God's kingdom. God's merciful and abundant love is fulfilling and it flows over to others. With God's love, we can have our cake and eat it too. Now together let us profess our common faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living in the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we now offer these prayers petition to our ever-living and ever-loving God. Almighty Father, we ask you to help us all to grow in peace, to grow in love, to grow in faith, as we hope and pray for our church leaders and all the baptized to do the same. We pray to the Lord. Glory to hear our prayer. We pray for an increase of vocations to sacramental life, to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering from natural and man-made disasters throughout the world, that our charity may bring them relief, stimulate their hope, help them find faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are affected by the drought, that they may have relief, and that we may have rain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, that they may be healed in mind, body, and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the respect of the dignity of every human life, from conception till natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we bring these prayers to you confident that through your divine mercy and divine providence, they will be heard for our benefit. And we bring them to you, to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, 
when we come to share in the divinity of Christ, to humble himself, to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we will be accepted by you, Lord. You may our sacrifice your sight this day be pleased to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my heart, please. Cleanse me of my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice. Praise and glory of his name for our good and for of all his holy church. Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. Especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, St. Gerard, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity or pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire holy people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Let the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May this be in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.